Hi and welcome to this online demonstration of R Made Easy with Blue Sky Statistics. So Blue Sky Statistics, if you're not familiar with it, is actually a fairly easy to use stats application and it's built on the open source R project. It provides a very familiar interface to people who are used to working with other statistical applications like SPSS or SAS and it attempts to harness the power of R through a fairly intuitive front end and giving access to a stack of classic analytical and data manipulation procedures. In doing so, it makes R a lot easier to learn because you can simply press the syntax button and that will show you the procedure that you're actually running as R code. And it also makes it easy to incorporate other R routines that maybe aren't included within the standard routines in the Blue Sky Statistics and even to build custom dialogue boxes for them and share them around. So who is Blue Sky Statistics for? What sorts of people might find it useful? Well, pretty much anyone who's interested in learning R, but via a more intuitive front end or an easier to use package. And that will include, for example, academics or students who want to switch from propriety stats to applications like R because R is rapidly becoming you know, the de facto standard these days for uh, classical statistics and for analytical applications. But they might also include organizations that are already using R and maybe have R programmers in their, in, in, among their staff and they want to extend the use of R to non-technical staff so that they can run the same underlying code but using different interfaces. And that will allow analysts who are looking to present their own R routines uh, you know, to do so via a GUI, via a graphical user interface and design their own custom dialogue boxes, etc. Et that means organizations interested in sharing our routines via a common or easy use platform are probably going to be quite interested in applications like Blue Sky Statistics. So R is made easy via Blue Sky Statistics because it gives you via a, a user interface, a graphical user interface, the ability to, to open and browse multiple data files in multiple formats, whether it be R, SPSS or Excel. And it also allows people to do things like create or edit variable labels and value labels and change the level of measurement of different fields or different variables, something which is done again via the UI. Um, and it'll also include a bunch of classic sort of data manipulation transformation routines, which you can either access via the R syntax editor or use the pre-built routines that allow you to recode data or compute new fields or aggregate and collapse or merge different files together or filter and subset and bin data. And then within the analysis menu with it, uh, of Blue Sky Statistics, you know, you're going to see a rich uh, list of exploratory functions that are going to include classic procedures like cross tabulation or summary statistics and classic graphical uh, applications like histograms, scatter plots, and box plots, as well as a lot of bivariate statistical tests, whether they be parametric or non parametric, classic tests like chi square or t tests or f tests or correlations. And it's not limited just to bivariate uh, tests, it'll also include things like linear regression, factor analysis, time series, and cluster analysis. And finally, you'll be able to export the output to PDF or HTML, as well as save the data file in a range of different formats. So without any further ado, let's, let's have a look at Blue Sky Statistics and see how it actually works. So we can start Blue Sky Statistics just by double clicking on the icon. And that generates the application itself. And it takes the form really of two separate windows. One is the, uh, the data editor window, if you like here, which we can see. Um, and in the background, we've got uh, a window that's made up of two different panes. One is the uh, results of analysis window, which is the output window really, and the other one is the R command editor, which is really the syntax editor, uh, where we'll see the uh, the R commands themselves. Um, if we return to the data editor, you can see that we're being invited here to to add new values, just like you would with a with a spreadsheet. So I could say, okay, we'll just put in, punch in some numbers here and add a new row. And having done so. Um, where we can then go and edit the field names and other properties associated with the variables themselves by clicking on the, the variables tab along the bottom here and give this a name. Uh, we can give it a, a little label if we want. 
and we're going to attach other information such as the type of data, the type of class of field it is, and even attach va uh, values and, and levels of measurement to it, etc., etc. So that's kind of how you how you start editing and adding data straight into effectively what's going to be an R data set or an R data frame. Um, probably more likely that you're going to want to go to the file menu and open the data set that maybe has been sent to you or one that you've been working on for a while. So if you go to file open here, it's going to generate a dialog box just like you would with any uh, Windows statistical application. And when we look at the file types along the bottom here, we can see there's a range of different file types you can read in, whether it be SPSS files or uh, Excel files or commerce separated files or SAS files etc etc i'm going to read in an r file here which is actually a just a little data set here called r cars dot r data so i just open that up it just opens up as you can see a data set and it's a not it's a data set that's been added as an extra tab so now we've got cars uh, added as a data set and we've got you know the field names across the top here x number of rows that we've got to work in about 391 rows or so and we can start doing analysis on this right away so i mean we could for example just click here and do a scatter plot we do a little scatter plot and we can ask for say let's do a scatter plot of the uh, engine size of a, of a car to uh, know, miles, per, miles per gallon or something like that uh, colored by origin so we can group by origin and click ok and immediately it squirts the results of that analysis onto the output uh, or, or the uh, results analysis window that we can see here so it's very, very similar to working in packages like, like SPSS. Um, if I come back to the data, you'll even see that we've got a little history button up here so I can call up scatter plot and I can hit syntax and it shows me the syntax that it's generating here in the background. So of course, one of the things you can do when you're actually looking at the syntax is you can interact with the syntax and make sense of, you know, how uh, Blue Sky Statistics has used R to generate this chart so we can see that it's made up an X and Y axis here of miles per gallon against engine size and um, we can see that there's three different groups American, European and Japanese and it's put some sort of smoother through through relationships here for each of these different countries so we can play around with that and say okay I'm going to change X from miles per gallon to a different field so there's a field in there called Accel for acceleration we might want to change the label from MPG to acceleration for that as well. So we just edit the label. And because we've got this little smoother that's going through there, we might want to change that so it isn't one of these curvy linear smoothers, but rather a straight line. So I can change this to method equals LM. Just a very simple edit. Highlight that, run it again, and it produces a different chart this time. So if I wanted to summarize the data in various ways, I could return to the data set and look at the different fields across the top here and say, well, I want to really try and summarize and sum them up. And if I click the summarize button here, it basically gives me a summary for all of the variables in the data set and tells me, for example, the miles per gallon, what the minimum number was, what the mean was, what the maximum was, etc., etc. And if I wanted to illustrate the differences between, let's say, uh, the different distributions for one of these fields, broken down by the countries um, that, that, uh, that the cars were manufactured in. I could come back to the data set here and click on the box plot button and say, okay, well, I'm gonna put, again, let's put miles per gallon in uh, the, uh, the Y variable, the scale button box at the top here. And we can see here that scales are represented as fields with little rulers associated with them. And I can say, okay, I want that broken down by their country of origin, which are represented by these multicolored icons which represent a categorical or factor field. And I can also then split that also by year, click OK. And it goes and generates a, a box plot uh, or a series of box plots for me on the output window. And uh, the box plots are really representing the distributions or uh, the spread within each year and within each country uh, for miles per gallon. And what we can see for the American cars here is that as each year increases from 1970 to 1982, that the miles per gallon is increasing steadily over time. And for the European data, miles per gallon uh, tends to be higher on average uh, based on this little black line, which is the median, but it's a bit more chaotic from one year to the next. And the same for the Japanese. 
uh, it's a little bit more chaotic and the spread is also quite different in miles per gallon for each year because of the different range of cars uh, within within that group. So that's a quick uh, overview of how we might analyze an R data set. What if we wanted to analyze a data set that wasn't created in R but was in a third party format? Well, if I just return to uh, the data window again and go to the file menu, I go to file open here and I can point it to an Excel file. So we've got an Excel file here called employees.xls and if I click open in that, um, it asks me which worksheet I want to open. Well, I'll, there's only one in there called employees so we click open and here this is added we've still got the cars data set we've still got the original blank or semi-blank data set at the start um, but now the employees data set has been added as a tab along the top here so we've got things like the gender of the employee their age their age group their education the job category and their ethnic minority and each row in this data set refers to a uh, employee within a bank um, and, and the data was actually used in a court case to prove discrimination in, in salary payments. So if we go to the variables tab now, we can see that in the variables tab, we've actually got a list of the different fields. Um, we've got labels, we haven't actually got any labels attached to them, but we could, we could attach a label here, such as sex of employee for gender, and that would appear whenever we did an analysis. So it's a nice way for us to format the data. You can see that the data class is either integer or it's double byte and we've got numeric or factor classes under factor here for example uh, we can see the little uh, the labels we can add new labels overwrite existing labels here we have the labels for uh, job category for example we've got a b and c for clerical custodial and manager and that's a nice way for us to format the data and be able to edit the data through a very sort of familiar type interface without writing a lot of code and it makes it a lot easier for people who aren't used to working with R to, to do that. And it's, you know, it generally makes it a lot more productive for people uh, when working with, uh, with data frames within R. So if we want to explore this data set. Um, we can run some sort of typical routines that one might do uh, against, uh, for example, the categorical fields here. And we could go up to the analysis menu and go to the summary analysis and start running some frequency tables. And if we pick the, uh, the categorical fields here and just drag and drop them across and click OK. And for people who are used to seeing, for example, SPSS output, this will look very familiar because here are some frequency tables which are showing us, for example, uh, ethnicity uh, breakdown. 77% uh, of people are a non-ethnic uh, group, 22% uh, are. Uh, frequency table, we've got, uh, we've got gender down here, 45%, 54%. There's a percent and a valid percent column. Um, the valid percent and percent column no different from one another because we don't actually have any missing data here, but missing data, if we did have it, would be denoted by the NA uh, row along here and tell us how many cases uh, we had which, which had blank values in them, for example. If we want to illustrate this relationship graphically, of course, typical way in which one would do that is to go to graphics and ask for something like a bar chart. If I click on bar chart here, I can say, okay, let's look at something like job category. I like put job category in there, but I can group it by, let's say, minority classification. So I can say, okay, I'm going to have it as a stack chart or show the group side by side. If I click OK at that point, it goes and produces a little, a little uh, bar chart for me. And if I want to see that relationship, of course, as a table, then the typical way in which one would do that is by uh, asking for a cross tab. So I can click on the cross tab here button, which is the same as going to analysis and uh, uh, contingency tables. When I click on cross tab here, uh, it'll call up the cross tab button and I can say, well, let's look at a job category, which I'll put in the rows and uh, my ethnic minority, which I'll put in the columns. If I go to options here, I can say, well, okay, let's tell me what the percentages are, what are the row percentages and even do a little chi-square test for me to tell me if there's significant differences here and click OK and it goes and punches out a little cross tab for me. And cross tabs are a very powerful way to see differences in relationships. Here is the, uh, the R command that's being run in the background. But here we can see that, for example, 75% of those within job category clerical are non-minority, 24% are minority. Of those within the custodial group, 48% of them are minority. So we can see there's a very similar sort of proportion here between minority and non-minorities. 
whereas within the manager group, only 5.9% of people are uh, minorities. And the asymptotic significance is simply an indicator of whether or not this is a, a random relationship or it's regarded as statistically significant. And uh, the E minus 06 indicates that this is a very, very small number. So we would definitely regard this as a statistically significant relationship. So if we wanted to compare, say, differences in summary statistics for different groups, such as means and medians and averages, um, we can go to the analysis menu and we can go to summary analysis again. Notice that we've got a means uh, sub menu here where we can do things like t-tests or f-tests and discover whether or not there are significant differences between groups. But if we just go to the summary analysis and we want to report on them, I can actually ask for numerical statistical analysis and say, okay, well, we're going to look at their current salary, salary now, their starting salary, and break that down by their job category and by their gender. We can say, okay, let's show us the minimum, the maximum salary, the mean, the median salary, and the standard deviation. If we click OK at that point, we can see it produces a little report for us. And here we have female clerical workers. What was their minimum current salary? What's their minimum starting salary? What's the mean current salary and the mean starting salary, etc., etc., and the standard deviations. And that breaks it down for each permutation of uh, the employee's gender and uh, their job category um, as we're, as we're uh, producing a report here. And of course, we can right click on this and copy this, export it to Excel for further analysis or further illustration if we want. If for whatever reason, we wanted to filter one of these groups and maybe focus in on just one group, let's say the managers, that we're getting here, we've got a little group here called C managers. One of the ways in which we can do that is if we go to the data menu, rather than doing analysis, we can ask for what's called a subset procedure. And we run a subset procedure. It simply says, okay, well, we're going to produce a new, a new data set for you, effectively as a subset or a filtered data set. And I'll call that managers. So I'll just give it a little name here. Then I tell it which fields I want included in that so I can get rid of any fields I don't want in that, in that particular uh, data set. And then I can say, well, okay, well, I need to, <clears throat> I need to give some sort of criteria here. So if I type something like uh, job cat uh, equals and, and an R you want to, um, you want to use a uh, two equal signs, job cat equals, and it's C uh, in quotes, C full stop space manager and then click OK. It runs that procedure for you and creates a new piece of uh, output or a new piece of data set for us called managers here. And we can analyze that. As you can see, everybody in here is filtered uh, by manager. And we can also see that we've got salary now and salary beginning just as we had beforehand. But let's say we wanted to compute a new field. We wanted to compute, say, the difference between their current salary and their beginning salary and do some, some sort of analysis on that so we can see how much people's uh, salaries have grown between their uh, current salary and their starting salary. Again, we go to the data here, and, and this time we'd run something called the compute procedure. We hit the compute procedure up here, and we'll create a new field, we'll call it sal diff, let's say, or salary difference, or salary, salary diff. And we simply give it a very simple little expression here. So we say salary now minus uh, salary begin, and it creates that new field for us called salary diff, and we just go back we see here salary diff, and then we can analyze that as if it's a, any other field. And again, we might want to use something like a box plot here. So if we click on box plot and we say, okay, let's, let's look at the difference in, in people's growth and salary broken down by their gender. And then put gender across top here. We can, we can group it by other subgroups and even more subgroups called uh, by using the create facets uh, dialog here. If I click on options, I can change things like the box color and red, you can see that you've actually got a range of different themes that one can use here. So if I say I would just want it in red with a solarized theme, click OK. It goes and squirts out and gives us a, a different sort of background color here. And here we have the differences between males and females in terms of their uh, their growth in their salary, the starting salary. We can see that for males, it's not just that they tend to earn more as we've seen from the averages, it's that even the increase in their salary tends to be greater than it is for females. And we can finish up our analysis by performing 
so multivariate analysis in the form of linear regression against this data set. Um, I'm not going to focus on managers moment. I'm actually going to uh, get rid of that data set and just go back to the employee data set. And if I want to perform the linear regression, I just go to analysis up here. It's a very simple procedure. And I'll go down to um, the model fitting menu, click on linear regression. And let's say I wanted to predict people's current salaries based upon some other continuous fields, uh, such as their starting salary, um, their age, years of education, time and job and previous experience. If I click OK at that point, it'll just uh, run the linear regression and produce some sort of output for me that tells me uh, what the level of fit is in the form of the coefficients, uh, what the R square is. We've got quite a strong R square here of 0 0.8. If you're not familiar with what linear regression is, don't worry about it. The point is that it helps us build a predictive model, helps us understand the various drivers uh, that explain the variation in people's uh, starting salary and the current salary. And here it's indicating to us that the, the beginning salary is, is the most important field. In fact, if I go back to the history and call it linear regression and hit the syntax here, I can even augment this and add extra uh, uh, lines to that in the form of um, uh, a, uh, a little procedure like plot. And I just say, well, you can see that this is going to create a data set here called B-Sky linear regression, that's it, or that's our output. So if I just say plot B-Sky linear regression and then run that again, it reruns the procedure, but this time it's actually got some additional little plots that shows us uh, the, the differences between the residuals and, and the fit of the, of the data. So we can even augment uh, these, uh, these uh, uh, R routines with our own little pieces of code and, uh, and get much richer output from that. If you'd like to find out more about Blue Sky Statistics, then simply click on the link or go to blueskystatistics.co.uk to download your copy today.